Yo, 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 what's going on? Welcome back out to the Cleveland Pulse YouTube channel. Before we get into this one with your boy, Justin, with your boy, Logan, the Cavs encapsulated crew, but that's not what we're here for today. That'll be our next upload. But like I said, let's make sure that we hit the subscribe button, hit the like button before we get into a fun, interesting video, as I'm sure you've seen by the thumbnail and the title. We are going to be talking about in late November, it's November 30th when we're recording this so we can look back, some of the potential awards that our Cleveland Cavaliers may be in the running for this year. We're going to talk about most improved player potential. We're going to talk about sixth man of the year. We all know who that might be in Ricky Rubio. We're going to talk about coach of the year and we're going to talk about rookie of the year, defensive player of the year. But to start, Justin, how are you doing? I'm um, doing fantastic. I'm glad that the Cavs are here to uplift my spirits after the weekend. And <laughs> I'm glad to be talking about them right now and not some other Cleveland team. Logan, how are you feeling? Good? Yeah, we'll leave that other Cleveland team to the side. It seems like pretty much every time they disappoint us, the Cavaliers uplift us. So yes. feeling pretty good today, Jeff. Yes, thankfully. And we're just going to kick it off with the the unicorn himself. We've been we've loved watching him all year long. Evan Mobley, I think he is well, this is what we've decided, and it's kind of nerve-wracking talking about this because we've already seen him miss four games, so you do not want to have this video and then put, you know, a bad jinx out into the, the NBA world, but we're hoping not to do that today. We basically have agreed that Evan Mobley is going to be all-rookie first team. I think that that is a guarantee just because he tr plays a, tr a true center five position, and there really wasn't a lot of prospects in this draft, but... I'm going to throw it over to Logan to start this one off. How do you feel about his rookie of the year chances? I know you're following this class a little bit more closely than Justin and I. I know that Jalen Suggs actually just broke his finger, so he's out indefinitely. Yeah, that's but he was not playing at a high level of basketball like Evan Mobley, if I do remember. Yeah, I believe Evan Mobley, the rookie of the year race is kind of his to lose. I think the way you lose that is potentially missing a few more games and letting some other guys go off for a few while you're out. Scotty Barnes, obviously his biggest competition. Chris Duarte has been a pleasant surprise over in Indiana. I question if he can keep that up. I almost think the more confidence Chris Duarte gets, it could maybe also hinder him a bit, especially in Indiana where he really has more free reign. Whereas in Cleveland, you kind of have that real organized basketball team basketball sure. where you can't really go out there and, you know, I guess do too much in a way, if that makes sense. I think Mobley plays within the system perfectly. He picks and chooses spots, just like all the Cavaliers have done this season. You talk about a guy that's averaging, what, 15 points, seven or eight rebounds, 1.8 yep. blocks leading all rookies. And obviously his contested shots number is still tops in the NBA despite missing four games. I think when you talk about overall impact on a team, there's no better rookie than Evan Mobley. The contested shots, the defensive side, and it's like you listen to our broadcast and Austin Carr is almost to the point where it's like he well, he loves watching Mobley so much. It's mm -hmm. it's to a point where he's impressed by the defensive side, how mature he is at 20 years old. Going over to Justin here, though, and I'm going to try to put these two together because we were talking before we started recording that I thought that we might have two defensive player of the year candidates, long shots, I think. Um, definitely defensive player, you know, first teams and defensive first teams and maybe second teams. But how do you feel about Mobley not only winning rookie of the year, Justin, but what are your what do you believe is his chances for defensive player of the year? Um, obviously, you know, we talked about it last night because on the broadcast, I, I misheard. I thought he I thought the announcer was saying that Moby was leading the league in blocks. However, he's leading the league in contested shots like we've been talking about all season. Um, but he also leads the Cavs in blocks right now. And like you were alluding to, Jared Allen having a couple blocks last night. Um, our team is just very sound defensively. And these two are, you know, at the forefront of it. I don't know that, you know, defensive player of the year is likely for any – any of our players just because of, you know, guys like Rudy Gobert and other players like Giannis who are, you know, just their, their stats lead the lead the league in blocks and steals and such. So um, it's going to be tough, but I think that just correlates to Mobley winning rookie of the year more so than anyone. And the point that I liked from Logan was just, you know, he's talking about the kid from Indianapolis uh, from Indy. And, you know, I was thinking more Scotty Barnes because, 
you know, he is in the similar situation of Evan Mobley where they have a team around him, but he's still excelling to a point that, you know, he's in his own role and he's still doing well enough. So um, I think Mobley's like, like Logan said, it's his to lose in that rookie of the year award. So just do a quick little Google here. And this is what makes me excited about Evan Mobley. He's 20. I'm not totally certain when his birthday is, but the youngest, there's a three-way tie between Kawhi, Dwight Howard, and Alvin Robertson for the youngest defensive player of the year award, and they were all 23. So he has this, if we're talking about him now in 20, he has a really good chance to potentially break that record and be the youngest player to ever win defensive player of the year, which would be awesome. That'd be something that would be great for the city of Cleveland, great for the organization. Switching gears a little bit, though, to someone who, like I said, we don't want to We've seen him take some starts, so it, it, it gets a little interesting. But I think the sixth man of the year award is – I think it's it might be, like Logan said about Mobley, it might be Ricky Rubio's award to lose as well in the sense that he is just playing he's, – he's having his career highs off the bench in points, assists. He's doing everything for this team. He's being the facilitator. He's playing well with other guards. He's playing well with other point guards in Darius Garland. He might be even in the category for most improved uh, player of the year, which we're going to get to next. But Logan, what has Ricky Rubio brought to this squad? And do you believe he has the, he could do it the remainder of the season? Ricky Rubio is just the ultimate quarterback. Absolutely leads that second unit with, you know, little hesitation. He goes out there immediately makes an impact. We especially saw yesterday in Dallas, just the way he controls a game can settle down the Cavaliers when things aren't going exactly right. The thing I worry about with Ricky Rubio and his race for the sixth man, it's not that I don't think he can't keep it up. I think he can. But a lot of the times that we've seen in recent history with the sixth man of the year award, it kind of just goes to one of the top three seeds who have a guy that can score 16 plus points off the bench. And they kind of ignore the overall impact of said player. I guess if I think about like 2013, J.R. Smith had a terrific season with New York. New York had been really good that year. So you throw it over to J.R. Last year, Jordan Clarkson with the Utah Jazz, uh, Jamal Crawford with those Clippers teams in the past, just kind of big-time scorers on good teams, whereas Rubio is, you know, that do-it-all player on a potential playoff team right now in the Cavaliers. So I think it's going to, you know, take a few other check boxes, you know, check boxes in the awards category to get uh, Rubio, you know, this honor. But when you talk about a guy that, and his impact and what it means to the team, what it means to that Cavalier bench, Ricky Rubio is the guy at six man. Justin, I, I want to hear your thoughts about this because you have an interesting dynamic where you feel that maybe Rubio and Garland have some, they have some differences on the court when it comes to the fourth quarter, especially maybe Garland plays a little bit differently when Ricky Rubio is out there. How do you feel about him uh, winning this award? And do you think his play with Darius Garland is sustainable? Yeah, so Ricky, for me, it's an interesting topic just because I don't think in, you know, Logan's saying that he thinks he can maintain what he has been doing. And I think, you know, we watched that one game where he dropped 37 some points and obviously he hasn't dropped more than 20 in a couple of games and everything. But um, we don't need him to be that kind of scoring outlet. We just need him to be like Logan was talking about that leader off the bench. But unfortunately in the NBA, I believe that the awards, uh, how they work is more um, stat based than they are with the actual importance of the player in question. Um, MVP has always been one of those awards where you're like, this person probably deserves it because if he's not playing their team stinks, but at the end of the day, it's going to go to the person who has the best stats and all that or a better story. Um, and for me, for Ricky Rubio, um, if this team makes the playoffs, then I, I think there's obviously a question like Logan was alluding to the top three teams. Um, but if this team in general just makes the playoffs, um, I think you'd see a very likely a good likelihood of Ricky Rubio making it. Now, the, the problem I have with Ricky and Darius is, you know, they both kind of take different roles when they're on the court together. You know, they're both very pass first, um, pass oriented guys, but they've both taken, you know, to being a little bit more assertive in certain moments. And sometimes it's when both of them are on the court and sometimes it's when, you know, it's just a solo on the court. And so um, it's going to be tough. You know, I think right now we're in a really good spot 
to see how it's going to mesh because everyone's back and everyone's healthy. So uh, this is going to be a period of time where we'll get into the schedule in our next video, but we'll really see what this team and these players are made of. The segue right into Darius Garland, because we're going to talk about most improved player next. Then we're going to talk about two of the um, facilitator roles in the organization being the coach and potentially uh, the executive, but we'll, <laughs> we'll talk about it because I have an interesting tidbit pulled up about it. I think this award for Darius Garland is I'm glad there's the rest of the season left for this award, because if you actually take a look at his basketball reference, I think it gets lost in the shuffle that last season he did only play 54 games. So mm -hmm. he missed a, he missed significant time with a couple of injuries as far as the landscape of the season. But I feel like they give most improved to, you know, they don't have people watching every game, you know, for every team. They, they don't know how big of a leap it's looked that he's yeah. taken for us. But if you look at his stats, he averaged 17.4 points a game last year. He's at 18.6 right now. And his assist numbers are, he averaged 6.1 assists a game last year to 7.2 this year. So those aren't standout numbers, I feel like, to the committee. I think that, and I'm going to go to Logan here first because he has followed this award very, very closely since the outset of the season. And I could be wrong. Correct me if I am wrong, Logan. I think Jordan Poole is probably the favorite to win this award. Now, his he's in jeopardy. Clay's coming back. Wiseman's come back. His numbers are go only going down, or his minutes are going down, I might say. He might even sneak into the six. Is, is he starting for them? Uh, with the Warriors, it's kind of like depends on the day, really. I, mean, okay. I think I've seen him start more often than not, though. He might uh, sneak into the I've sixth seen. man of the year award if, he, yeah. if he's first off their bench. But I saw Duante Murray stats for San Antonio, and he's playing really good basketball. All career highs for him across the board, so – yeah, I want to go to Logan here first about what he feels like. And the guy from Memphis, talk about him as well. Yeah, there's a few candidates. I think you talk about Desmond Bain from Memphis. Uh, I think you talk about Cole Anthony from the Orlando Magic. Uh, Miles Bridges from the Charlotte Hornets, who's really kind of come into his own, kind of more that borderline all-star kind of player. Um, I would say it's kind of like, he's kind of, I would say Miles Bridges kind of in that category of Jalen Brown maybe two years ago, where he was about to make that next leap is kind of where I see him at. Um, here's the thing though, most improved player to me, yes, it definitely does matter your points per game. If there's a big leap there, you're kind of the favorite, but Garland this year, I have seen him score from all three levels. I think before he was either chucking up a really long three, or he was maybe putting up one of those floaters. Now I'm seeing him dribble every which where, you know, finding each and every spot, whether he finishes the floater finishes with a contact layup able to you know shield the defender uh that step back three that now he takes i think he's just found more creative ways to score he's also set up his teammates in more creative ways and when it comes to winning basketball he's more animated he's more in the moment during those big moments um but he's got a lot of competition this year desmond bain had a big numbers increase miles bridges is starting to creep up there a little bit i think he cooled down a little bit after the beginning of his season though and then cole anthony's currently hurt for the magic but He's you know, put together a pretty good campaign as well, really scoring the ball well and actually distributing better than many people might have thought him coming out of North Carolina. Justin, your, your boy, Darius Garland, any thoughts on uh, six, our most improved player of the year? Yeah, going back to your point, Jeff, you look at his numbers from last year to this year, it's not a huge jump in any statistical category, and that's probably going to be the biggest outlier. However, like we were alluding to with Ricky Rubio and just the importance of the actual player that Darius Garland is, um, you know, the role he has taken on since Colin Sexton has been hurt and at the beginning of the season as the leader of this team, um, you know, facilitating the offense, bringing the ball up, getting everyone going. Um, even last night, you could see the first two, the first three buckets were all involved with Darius Garland to get us going after Luka Doncic, you know, started going off. But um, yeah, he's he's in a tough spot to win this award. I'd I'd really like, sa I would sacrifice him getting this award if he could just get into the All Star game in yes. some way. Um, I think that he's just shown that the improvement and it'll be something that we talk about in the next video. I think he's starting to garner a lot of respect from um, opposing all-star players. Um, and 
unfortunately, like Logan alluded to, there are guys that have taken much larger steps in, you know, their statistics and such. But I think in terms of what this team has done with Garland this year and, you know, the comparison to last year, you know, I, I think there's a big improvement. I just don't know that it's enough for him to win this award. I would totally agree with you. And we're kind of skipping over that. But I think if you've watched the games, if you follow the teams, I think your all-star hopefuls, and I hope you guys would agree, would be Darius Garland. Probably at this point in time, November 30th, probably second to Jarrett Allen somehow. I think they're very yeah. close, but I think Jarrett Allen is probably the front runner. Mobley's going to be there with the rising stars, but I don't think he's going to yeah. make – probably not won't make the all-star game roster. But this, to fin- year. this year, this year, this, this year. year, but to finish off two guys who don't actually ever touch the basketball. Well, maybe JB <laughs> if he's getting pissed off, but <laughs> coach of the year, I think we have discussed the Bulls head coach is Billy Donovan. They're in a great spot in the Eastern conference, 14 and eight. I think Wes Unsell jr. Is probably in the conversation. If the wizards keep this play up, they're 13 and eight and ahead of us, but I think J.B. Bickerstaff, Logan, is right behind those two guys if we could maintain this level of play for the rest of the season. Well, J.B. is just that kind of guy that gets his guys to buy into what he's selling. Um, I think he's a player's coach big time, constantly has their back. In fact, I've seen him argue with referees more this year than, you know, I thought he was, you know, and I thought he would, especially back in his uh, assistant coaching days at the Rockets and the Grizzlies. Um, You know, he's very animated coach. I think that's kind of what the Cavaliers are this year. They're all kind of animated. I think in a way they feel that they've been disrespected by the league and, you know, they want to prove a few people wrong. So they really get into the game. I think JB is one of those guys that kind of spearheads that movement and and spearheads this new attitude, this newfound attitude that the Cavaliers have. I think that matters just as much as your record. I think if you're a competitive team, suddenly if you are, you know, there to stay, if you're there to play each and every game 48 minutes and see what happens, I think that's a lot of that comes down to coaching and I, they've won a lot of close games this year, also lost a lot of close games. But I think those close games is where you can really see how good a coach is and what he does right way does wrong. Sometimes you miss shots that happens as well. Um, but I really think JB Bickerstaff, I didn't have a whole lot of faith going into it. However, you know, he got off to that nice start at the end of the season, even with Andre Drummond there, I think we went seven and eight to finish the season last year or no, two years ago. I'm thinking, thinking a little bit off here i think the whole pandemic threw off the <laughs> yes right with you. but um either way jb i think now he's got the right guys the, the the right attitude and i think he's a big reason for that i think he instilled that from day one which could certainly put him in that running for coach of the year justin is there any commentary here for kobe altman to be the executive of the year here's the interesting thing because 2020, <laughs> James Jones won it. He's the GM for the Phoenix Suns, the, the, the Cleveland Cavs' James Jones, bench player from the 2016 team. So that's pretty interesting. I just I Googled that really quick and wanted to bring that up. Is it more JB or has Kobe made good moves? And, Logan, I will say before, Justin, you start, I did say in our expectations video, I think Justin might, may have hinted at it, we did not think that he was JB was going to be here at the All-Star break. So yeah. kudos yeah. to him. Yeah, um, it's, I think it's a combination of both. And it's really, you know, it's kind of like how we were talking about with Darius Garland. The From last year to this year, uh, this team looks so much more improved with the players that we have. Obviously, I don't know that you can constitute Jared Allen being the addi- a, an addition for this year. However, you look at the three players that we've gotten since then, Ricky Rubio, Louis Markinen, and obviously Evan Mobley. Um, th- those three acquisitions alone – um, from last year to this year, I feel give us a great or gives Kobe Altman a great chance of winning this award, especially with, you know, Laurie being a starter playing as well as he has Ricky coming off the bench playing as well as he has and Evan obviously leading the rookies right now. Um, but going back to JB, yeah, we had so many questions about him in particular. Um, mm-hmm. and, it's just crazy to see, you know, we we question at the very beginning of the season, this three big man lineup with Markinen starting at three. Um, and then, you know, he goes out and Dean Wade is starting at the three. But we we've, we've been winning games. We're currently above 500. Um, Tom Thibodeau from the Knicks last year, you know, they won 41 of 31 or they won 41 
and lost 31 and he won the award, but you know, it's about taking that jump as a team and they had statistics from the Knicks the year prior to when they won or when he won the award last year that were greatly improved. If you look at us from last year to this year, I believe our defensive stats have improved greatly um, along with our offensive stats. I think we're uh, probably averaging more assists than we are from last year and maybe more points. I'd have to look that one up, but I think just both those guys have um, obviously it's a lot easier for Kobe Altman because all he does is just, you know, now he just sits in the rafters and watches games, but um, bigger staff has done a fantastic job with this team so far this year. How did I not mention that, Justin? You're so right. The three big lineup, you know, yeah, Kobe Altman gave you the pieces, but how did you make the pieces fit? I have not been a supporter of the three big lineups since day one. And at times I still have my moments, but I think it's certainly been much more effective than I thought it would be. And the NBA clearly like wasn't ready for it in a lot of ways. Uh, it's, such, it's such a different look and such an out of the box thinking that that, I mean, suddenly sitting at 11 and 10, Jay Bickerstaff is certainly in that running because of just the way he rotates guys in and out and the way he's had to work also guys with guys being down different starting lineups, Correct. you know, different guys off the bench. He's had to work against that and still put together a very, very competitive season for the Cavs. I would agree that, that JB is definitely more likely to win his award than the executive of the year. I think that's, I think that's good. That's good conversation. I think we could revisit this video probably even before the all-star game and put yep. out another one of these videos. So Lots of hardware could be coming in for your Cleveland Cavaliers this season. I think that the most exciting one is the rookie of the year. The last, the last player to win rookie of the year for us, we know what he did for the city. So, and in a big game seven. So that's exciting. That's what we want to see. And we want to see you guys, the audience back. Well, we want to see you coming back to our videos. So hit that bell notification and make sure you check out the rest of our Cavs content should be in playlists on the channel description and the channel playlist section. So with that being said, We'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.